You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another, well, interesting episode of Ask Drone You. As always, my name is Paul. And as always, my name is Rob, and it's great to be with you. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. Very much appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it, and I want to get a quick message out before we go into today's show regarding accident reconstruction. Uh, you'd actually think that maybe we had called and asked someone to ask this question, but we actually we actually <laughs> didn't. No. So uh, thank you for the question. We yeah, do appreciate it. As always. But uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago we did a show regarding the hustle of finding drone jobs. And there is a quick little message I want to get out to all of you, whether you're here listening for accident reconstruction or uh, you're here just to listen to the show and you're an avid drone pilot. There's a there's an something important I think that we should say to all of you, which is I know a lot of you are hustling really hard to build the right scalable systems to have consistent drone jobs to support your business. And I think a lot of people as we have kind of discussed and also discovered in our in-person trainings, um, are really fighting doubt, self-doubt. And they are trying to build belief in themselves. And I think what's going to be helpful for all of you, whether you're in law enforcement, whether you're a drone pilot, whether you're a firefighter, whether you're a construction contractor and you're flying drones, There's something that I feel like we all have lost uh, because so oftentimes we we tend to put our intellect, our rationale in front of decisions uh, that may help us pursue a brighter future. And what we're lacking is imagination. And that imagination, that picture of what your business or your organization or your team could achieve seems to be lacking. And yet imagination is free. And imagination helps us realize where we want to be and then kind of reverse engineer from there to help us with the belief, the belief in ourselves. Because at the end of the day, we have to start with imagination and belief and then find small ways every single day to build habits to make that imagination a reality. And I wanted to just put this in a very simple form because we've kind of been talking about hustle recently. We've been talking about working hard. And so many people are lacking the belief. And I came across actually a sermon this weekend. Uh, and I shared it with with Rob, Mr. Uh, Mr. Michael Todd, out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, probably one of the best pastors I, I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, because it's so relatable. Uh, The information is just so relatable. And he talks about how imagination is free. Belief is free. And we can reverse engineer from that to essentially have faith, not only in God, but in ourselves that we can achieve that. And I just wanted to bring that message to you today because it resonated so much with me because I have realized recently that I've achieved everything that I dreamed of as a child. Mm -hmm. Flying, business, I'm going to get a little materialistic here, so forgive me, nice SUV, (laughs) uh, you know, uh, nice home that I'm comfortable in, a lovely fireplace. I know that sounds weird, but I love my morning fireplace. Uh, And, you know, I've achieved all those things and my imagination has kind of run out. And as we have so many new, incredible programs that we've built here at Drone U on our props platform, I've kind of like my imagination has been kind of slowly growing again, but it it hit me this weekend that I need to reimagine my imagination Hmm, and and reimagine what's truly possible. Because it's only taking that imagination and the belief and then the habits to do it. That's like literally the formula, right? To, to grow and to really help people. And every one of you knows why we are, why we sit in these chairs. It's, it's not, uh, to, um, showcase Rob's shiny head or build Paul's ego. 
Uh, so what it really is, is a deep, passionate pursuit of helping other people, helping other people learn the no bullshit experience-based information to help them take flight, whether they're taking flight to save lives with search and rescue, taking flight to audit uh, material piles on a construction site, you know, help people build their company with marketing videos and photos. We love to help people. And to help people learn to fly helps them realize entrepreneurship. It helps them realize that they can use a tool in a new way to work smarter, not harder. They can be outside, which is good for your health. They can be on the move, which is good for your health. They can challenge themselves intellectually, which is good for your health. Um, all these things that empower us, we are here to try to help you with that realization, with that belief to achieve those things. And so I felt it was just absolutely critical this morning to talk about how important it is that all of you are taking time to imagine, to literally imagine what the future holds for you and reverse engineer that. And funny thing, Rob, today, so I have this, uh, Rob knows, he can see my computer, I know you can't. Uh, I have this app built into Google Chrome, which I really should stop using Google Chrome, it's the devil. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I should really go back to Firefox or uh, DuckDuckGo like I use on my phone. But that said, today's quote in my Momentum app, this is what helps me kind of stay on track, give me information and whatnot. There's always a quote of the day, today's quote of the day, which I just found so uh, uh, relevant to this message and, and what I learned this weekend. You can't do it unless you imagine it. That simple. Yeah, it's very simple and profound. It's And funnily, it's factually true, right? You have to think about it to do it. Seriously. I suppose you could do things. I, w I would probably add to that, that you can't do it. And I think it's implied in the app's purpose and so forth, but... You can't do it, it being um, something, say, bigger than yourself, or you can't achieve something great, or I think there's like a hole in the quote the way they did it, but at the same time, they're they're keeping it open-ended um, because I'm a literal thinker, and so I read that, and I'm like, well, sure you can, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that's not what's intended by the quote, nor your message, and I love it. It's great. Well, I just think it's important for all of us as many of us are uh, battling struggles, and uh, it, as, as our country faces this dark, harsh time, which we have alluded to on many shows, just antidote, uh, ansi 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 anecdotally, anecdotally, we'll go with that, um, talking about the fourth turning, which we talked about a lot last year and whatnot. Just remember to imagine your future, be grateful for what you have, think about how far you have come rather than thinking about what's ahead and just keep pressing forward. All you have today, there's a reason they call it the present. It's a gift. Use it. All right. I'm done being on my high horse. I'm not on a high horse, on a high chair, uh, <laughs> kind of like I was when I was a child. So uh, so is Rob, by the way. But uh, no I digress. Inference. No inference to be yeah, taken right. from that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not saying we're kings. It's just a literal chair that sits higher than other ones. Anyway, but that said, uh, we're going to get right into today's question. Uh, we have uh, two sponsors today. Uh, both of them are Rob. Uh, so since there is no longer a bald-headed bureau and there is just now a bald where there, our bald is the sponsor of the day, which actually relates to our question today regarding accident reconstruction. So uh, first piece of sponsorship information. Many of you know, probably from listening to the show, we have an experience training coming up here in November in Austin, Texas. It is seven days long. Now, this training is all about bringing the mission-based exercises like we do at the fly-in and combining it with a real-world drone mission from start to finish. So not just flying, but actually flying producing the media, and then taking that media and actually presenting it uh, in front of a board so that you can get real-time feedback, so that you can really understand, uh, you know, what you did right, what you did wrong. Now, this training is our flight mastery, so you can earn educational discounts on insurance through Skywatch by passing that, gaining that certification, aerial videography, advanced photography, and you have the option of joining us for mapping or complete the real world drone 
mission. So that said, we're ending the entire training with two days of business scaling systems. This is the course that we did with Kara. It's going as props business here soon. Uh, in fact, I think that should be up. I, I forgot to uh, review that last week. So I, sorry, Michael. I emailed Michael that I had to review it and I never reviewed it. That said, I was up in Colorado the last four days uh, enjoying uh, the beautiful weather. Uh, but that said, those last two days, I think would fundamentally change your entire business. And the reason I can say that is because looking at Kara and how she runs her business and how she automates the entire life cycle or navigation of a client, I can say, speaking from her experience, that this will change your business. It will make it easier to onboard clients, filter clients, keep clients in communication, help them understand when deliverables are coming, deliver to them, keep them kind of in your network work and newsletter, offering uh, autonomous upsells for prints and whatnot. I mean, this seven days is by far the most comprehensive training that we have ever done. Now, if you're a DroneU member, you do get a significant discount. Uh, actually, the discount is literally more than the cost of membership for an entire year. So if you are ready for a drone training adventure, five days of flying nonstop, two days of working on your business to scale it, to automate it, to make it easier to serve clients so you can truly scale your business to have that recurring revenue, then you do not want to miss this class. We don't know when the next one is. I will say we already have signups for this. I'm very excited about that, very grateful for it. You are going to be on site with the flight crew. Lodging and food is included with the price, just so you know. That means seven days, Rob, myself, few of our other instructors, and frankly, because it's a small training, you're going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. This is something we normally don't do. And everyone has been asking for, for this for a long time from our flight mastery classes, from our mapping classes. Like, Paul, I would pay more for smaller classes if I could just get more time with you, if I could get more time with Rob, it would be worth its weight in gold. Well, here you go. Sign up, experience dot the drone you dot com you won't want to miss it all right for our second sponsor gosh, so i gotta put on a different hat here you sure we should do it? <laughs> i'm just gonna do it really quick i'll do it really quick um so before uh, we have not launched this program yet that's why i'm putting it as a sponsor right now uh, we got this question and i feel like it's really relevant but our props public safety program is going up yes we have been working on this program for over two years and essentially this program was built to help the heroes gain intelligence knowledge and information based from experience so whether you're an leo or you're fire or your ems we have a program for you now our fire and ems program will not be completed until pretty much the end of Q4, but our LEO program is currently up. What does that include? Well, remember the props program is professional, reliable operators practicing safety. Props educational platform is made to create, well, an easy and convenient platform for managers like you. So you can manage multiple pilots going through nuanced training and understand who's proficient versus current, who's caught the bug, who hasn't, who is actually getting through their work and who is not. All of this data is incorporated to give you a real real-time status of exactly what's working and what isn't. Now, the Props Public Safety LEO program, what classes are included with that? Part 107. Okay, that's number one. Number two is operations. Number three is the don't crash course on whatever aircraft that you are flying. After that, we get into specific to LEOs, our accident reconstruction class that we filmed at the NTSB Federal Training Academy in Ashburn, Virginia. That was a five-day class that's condensed, I think, into about 36 to 40 hours of footage that is online through the props program. And that's the beauty of the props program, right? You can actually view this information on your phone, online, wherever you want to go. It's sequential. The resources pop up once you prove that you have the knowledge to actually utilize that information to gain the shortcuts to create the habits that turn into methodologies. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is that this 
Public Safety LEO program also includes our SAR package. That means we're teaching you the uh, how to essentially conduct search and rescue missions utilizing drones, utilizing data gathering to better understand uh, the victim as a whole and understand statistically where their direction of movement might be, how far it might go, and then which drone strategies correlate with that to understand the best methods of utilizing drones for search and rescue. Now, I will say say that primarily that entire methodology slash system is based off of digital photos, not off of thermal. There are thermal pieces in there, but the meat and the potatoes is all about comprehensively covering areas with automated mapping and then taking those photos, scouring through them uh, with people, but also utilizing various applications to actually search those photos autonomously to find people, persons, and objects. Now, I just read an article that Rob sent over recently that there's another new autonomous search and rescue uh, engine that's out there. And uh, I, honestly, I think it's amazing. Uh, we've been looking at another new engine outside of the Locate program called Pictera because Pictera is really great for nuanced departments. Like let's say that you're in the Houston area, you deal with a lot of water all the time, you're looking for specific things. You can actually set up and train the software, like throw a bunch of different maps in there, train the software for what to look for, tell it, no, these are false negatives. These are false positives. This is what we were looking for. And you literally train the application so that it gets better and better and better and better at finding what you are looking for. Think, Kind of think of it like uh, spell check on your iPhone, right? They have all these neural networks on your iPhone to literally tell you how often you make spelling mistakes and then code your phone so that when it sees you making the mistake, it auto corrects, right? We're pretty much doing the exact same thing with that mapping software. We have not put Pictera in the search and rescue program just yet. I don't think it's ready yet, but it's definitely promising. That said, Props Public Safety LEO includes 107, Don't Crash Course, Operations, Accident Reconstruction, and SAR Mapping. Now, this is also a program that's given to LEOs for an entire year. You can also track and manage equipment, you can track and manage pilots' currency, and you can track and manage pilots' proficiency through these programs. Now, that said... Once your pilots pass the public safety LEO program, they get their first certificate, but they can only level up and get certificate number two and prove proficiency by attending a flight mastery course, because that's the only way we can really prove that they're proficient in the field is by doing it in the field. But that said, you can also just go through the entire props program. And when you feel like people are ready for flight mastery, book that later. So it's a flexible system. Okay, that was a long diatribe on our prop system. If you want to check it out, you can go to props.thedroneu.com. That was a good show. Jeez, Rob, sorry. It was like 15 <laughs> minutes of sales. Like, who why, who are we, Joe Rogan? No. <laughs> so, except Joe, I was actually thinking about that, except Joe Rogan does 15 minutes of sales and then his show is 14 hours long. <laughs> Although, Joe, I really do, do love the information oh, that you have. I do too. For, no. for deep people like us, I can do the 14 hours, okay? I'm so. kidding. <laughs> Two to three hours generally, and I love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to do a question now. Hi, this is Marcus from Ontario, Canada. I'm an LEO. Just wondering if you have any courses on uh, collision reconstruction or any tips or advice on the best way to complete that sort of task. I'd be flying a Mavic Enterprise Duel. Thanks. Thank you, Marcus. Appreciate the question. AskDroneU.com is where Michael, uh, I'm sorry, Marcus went to ask his question. One just right off the top thing that he said was collision. He used the word collision. Instead of accident. Instead of accident. That's I, thought a very... that was, I think that's because he is in law enforcement, right? Yes. And I one, one thing that I have heard many, many times, especially from our friends at uh, APD here in Albuquerque, uh, Mr. Mark Aragon actually said this. He's now retired. And he said, we shouldn't call it accident reconstruction. We should call it crash reconstruction, yeah. right? But the SEO term and the marketing term is definitely accident reconstruction. Like it literally levels higher than crash reconstruction. But I agree with Marcus and all these LEOs yeah. that it's more so crash reconstruction because at the end of the day, 
not really an accident. Well, and I think uh, even Bill has mentioned not calling it that, right? Yes, he has. Yeah. It's 100%. So interesting. Now, now that said, we recently had a podcast with um, a, a deputy sheriff from, uh, was it, L.A. Sheriff, and we had John Wakey here, FDNY, kind of testing the Skybrows system against the traditional reconstruction system, right? Geo-referencing, um, you know, utilizing a, a multi-acquisition strategy and then processing in something like PIX40. Um, now, I will say, when it comes to giving information to public safety, there is a higher standard. And I feel that many people do not really understand this and they lose credibility by not understanding it. But when we deliver information to public safety, there must be a higher standard because public safety, I've said this before, I'll say it again, is often put in the middle, in the middle of politics and what the government wants versus what society actually enforces. And then police are in the middle and trying to make everyone happy. And so when it comes to the information that we give them, we have to be comprehensive and complete, which is also why I took that show down. So Bobby, I haven't emailed you back yet. Haven't called you back. I need to. The reason that I took the show down is because I feel like we did not have a good disclaimer on when Sky Browse is good and when it's not good. Because one thing that I'll give Bobby credit for, he's behind Sky Browse, um, is the fact that they have evolved so fast, Rob. And they are really the only CGIS compliant system for accident reconstruction. Hmm. The only problem with Skybrows, and, it, and it's kind of been the issue from the beginning, is when you're doing mapping or 3D reconstruction from video, you're taking a 20 megapixel sensor and going down to 8 megapixels because of how video is formatted on those sensors. So you, you don't have as much detail. Now, I will say there was a recent uh, article uh, from Miriam from Drone Life. You, um, if you haven't been listening to Drone Life News, uh, you can check it out. But there was a recent article, and she actually wanted to bring up uh, that there was a demonstration at a conference testing React, testing um, Skybrows, testing Pix4D, and whatnot. But I, I refused to do the story on the news because while I believe that it was a valiant effort based off of the people who did it, it was not complete. And what I mean by it wasn't complete is the, the whole story wasn't there about uh, detail, about really being able to understand what Skybrows is capable of and what traditional, uh, we'll call it traditional, PIX4D accident reconstruction can do. And the best way to really give you an apples to apples comparison and to understand is let's say that you have a crash that also involved um, hmm, that also involved firearms, okay. weapons, or skid marks, okay? In those instances, this is where pix 4 d while it does take longer, for sure, um, essentially trumps Skybrows because of the detail, the information that you can see. We tested Skybrows against pix 4 d and it was faster every single time. But where other articles and our information wasn't complete as well, which is essentially talking about that you have fundamentally different acquisition strategies. So can I fly a similar acquisition strategy with pix 4 d that I can with Skybrows? And the answer is yes. And it takes almost the exact same time, to be honest with you, if you're a qualified, knowledgeable, experienced pilot. Now, where Skybrows really excels is in their true CGIS compliance. I mean, it is really, really true CGIS compliance. And we saw that with Stephen Sharp. And I would say when it comes to CGIS compliance, Skybrows is the easy winner. It just doesn't give you the level of detail and geo-referencing that PIX4D does. So when would you need that detail? Let's say you have shell casings in your mapping area. Skybrows won't show it. Picks 4D will. Let's say that you have a small three inch knife, right? I got, I got mine right here. Thanks, PJ. Still have it, right? This, I don't know how much of this would show up in Skybrows, right? If this were a little bit smaller, it probably wouldn't show up. This size, it might. Um, but that said, what I really believe, I know some agencies are using Skybrows. They're seeing success with it. But when it comes to geo referencing and when it comes to mapping detail, oftentimes the 
com- the picture isn't complete. We don't have enough information to truly make good, educated decisions on who is at fault, who was speeding, who was past a certain point, where was the collision impact, how did that G-force affect essentially the overall uh, uh, accident as a whole or crash as a whole. I will say if it comes to speed, Georeferencing is not important and you don't have small details like shell casings, small, say, sub three inch weapons like uh, knives or um, or other things, then sky brows might actually work for you. Now, the reason that I took the show down after posting it is because I was worried about officers utilizing that information to go out and start doing accident reconstruction. Oh, I can press a button, drone flies a circle. Oh, and I got my my reconstruction. It's like, well, hold on a minute. Convenience never equals quality, okay? There's always like, you can get it fast, you can get it cheap, or you can get it uh, uh, quality, right? Pick two, okay? You never get all three. And so the reason I took it down is because I really wanted to have a disclaimer that says, The amount of detail that you get is less while it is faster with Skybrows. Now, if I were a police officer, and this is really why I took it down. If I was a police officer and I had to go in court against a subject matter expert, someone who was like a professor of photogrammetry, right? Or let's let's just let's paint a picture with Ongit, right? I know he's a brink now, but let's paint a picture with Ongit. Let's say there's a big accident in Los Angeles County. It causes a huge pileup on I-5, okay? Costs a million dollars an hour to shut down I-5, just in case you're wondering. The highway is shut down for seven hours. Catastrophe, port backup is even worse. Let's say there's hazardous materials coming out of the port, and they got to get them up I-5, and they can't because it's accident, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, if I had to go in court and defend utilizing Skybrows, knowing what I know about photogrammetry, I would be shaking in my shoes because if the prosecutor had a, or the defense team had a good, um, subject matter expert in photogrammetry, which is unlikely, but carry on. Well, uh, it depends on you can't you can't base your decisions on unlikely, but go true. Ahead. Go ahead. That's a very good point, and I would say in in larger metropolitan areas, they're definitely getting SMEs in court for sure. So I've been asked right. to do no, it a couple I, times. I'm so. sure they will. That doesn't mean they'll be good. Yeah, this is a, a very valid point. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Carry on. Um, but that said, I would be shaking in my shoes because. If I actually knew the science and rules of photogrammetry and how reconstruction is done, um, I would, it, it's very easy to argue that you do not have enough detail to make complex calculations and decisions without ancillary materials. So I know some people are still doing their normal accident reconstruction methodologies and then using Skybrows on top of that. That's fine, Merry Christmas, but I thought the whole point was efficiency. So that said, I revert and I've noticed, uh, let me finish before I move on. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of county municipalities are starting to use Skybrows. And I think it's great because it is a more efficient tool. And there are a lot of instances where you don't need that detail. But in the true fatal cases where we're trying to understand fault and we have big insurance companies, they're going to wise up to the rules of photogrammetry. I mean, we were we were working with, with uh, a, I'm not, I can't, I almost said the name of the company. We were working with insurance adjusters and claims people two years ago. So I know that they're definitely pretty privy to the information. But that said, let's say you have a a fatal accident, you need that detail, you need to understand fault. This is when you should be using uh, a accident reconstruction engine that provides more detail like PIX40. Okay. Uh, Skybrows, in my humble opinion, I don't think would be sufficient, nor would I ever want to recommend to a police officer who already puts their freaking life on the line for a bunch of, honestly, for a lot of people who frankly don't deserve it. And they're the true heroes. And in an effort to not put them in a sticky situation, I want to, I want to say, well, hold on. Skybrows does work. There are certain situations it does work, but on highly technical fatal accidents where we really need detail, I cannot sit here morally and say, you should use Skybrows. 
I think that you should use Pix4D because the amount of detail, the way that you can prove georeferencing, the uh, scientific know-how behind it, and again, how you can prove it through the quality report is unmatched. It's unparalleled. And so, as I was just saying, a lot of smaller cities, municipalities, and counties are using SkyBrows. At the federal level, the standard is still PIX4D. And I just want to make that clear. And Bobby, I hope that you realize I'm not trying to poop on your chest here, okay? What I'm trying to do is be very real with public safety and say, yes, uh, instead of going into here are the classes that we offer, let's have a conversation <laughs> about what really works in certain situations, right? And there is no absolute, there is no end all be all. Uh, and SkyBrows has gotten very, very good at the algorithms that they use, the machine learning that they use to create really lifelike looking uh, models. That said, uh, I would still say Pix4D is better. So to kind of recap and answer his question, what do you guys offer for LEOs? So we just launched our props system for public safety, and we call it public safety LEO. And as you heard in the, my sales pitch, essentially, uh, in our sponsored segment, we talk about what courses are included with that. Accident reconstruction is included with that. And I will say it is the federal standard, and we believe in a higher standard because we believe when it comes to giving ladies and gentlemen in public safety information, the standard has to be high. Why? Because they have a higher standard to follow as well. They don't want to be nitpicked in court. They don't want to have a 19 and a half year career and make one kind of lazy mistake and end their pension. Okay. I've seen that happen. I don't want that to happen to you guys. That's why I'm like, look, I love Skybrows and I'm even going to say it right now. We are adding Skybrows into the LEO program and the public safety fire program because it is easy, it is simple, it is convenient, and it is CGIS compliant. And the the growth that they've done in just one year is absolutely astounding. Bobby, I got to say, dude, you deserve massive credit, my friend, because you're one of the few CEOs that I've ever met that's, that, that has taken crap from everyone, including myself, and you've listened to it all and you've improved on it. I mean, how many CEOs have the humility and balls to do that, Rob? Like, come on. Have you had Bobby on the show? I haven't, no. We should. Well, he's been blowing up my email. A lot of people in the fingerlings or as uh, as uh, uh, Rick would say from GPC, the fabric of the industry have been telling him what's been going on here at Drone U and he's been blowing my phone up. And honestly, I just haven't gotten back to him because we have so many things going on right well, now. Well, then I'll get back to him. Well, I'll get back to Forward him. Forward me the email. I'll get back I'll to him. I'll set it up. I think we should have him on and get his perspective. I honestly would say I think he deserves a shot. I think yeah, he deserves. Yeah. I think he deserves a, a an opportunity to well, to speak his uh, his mind. Well, absolutely. And then and so um, along those lines, in terms of giving people the the right information, I want people to hear it from him, right? True. And hear his explanation. Or I'm sure he would push back on some of the things that you've said. And actually, I, I think you've been very fair, just kind of telling the truth as as it is. But um, I don't know. I would love to get his perspective. And I think there are a lot of people out there that are wondering about Skybrows that would love to get his perspective as well, understanding that he's the CEO of the company and he'd be on here in some sense selling it. But at the same time, he's got to stand behind it as well. So for sure, I would it, just like it to be out there is all. I, I think so too. And I, I also want to clarify why I have the position that I have. I am the son of a high-powered attorney from DC. The way that I was taught growing up is what happens if your actions end up in court, Paul? What happens? Okay. Yeah. Now, you know this because it's something we talk about all the time. <sighs> yeah. I know this. So, and uh, <laughs> I am in court right now for some of the things that I've said. So, uh, that said. That's true. That is true. Sort of. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so, that said. We learn. We grow. We do. <laughs> thanks to Rob. We do. No, 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 no. Not thanks anyway. to Rob. Anyways. Um, but my point is, is that I always think of things in the rationale of what happens if it ends up in court. Can I defend it? Do I know the knowledge, the systems, and the science? And can I communicate it in front of a judge in a bunch of laymen's, right, jury, a bunch of laymen's, and explain why I did what I did, yeah. right? And do so confidently with conviction, okay? Yeah. 
When well, I think of things like that, that's why I say what I say I about Pix 4D. I understand. And for everybody out there saying, oh, what a horrible way to live. Well, whatever. You can have your perspective. I mean. It's really not that bad. All, no, I, no, <laughs> of course not. But I just know how people respond to stuff like that and whatevs. I mean, but, but yeah, no, I mean, so as far as well, Marcus's quest, uh, <laughs> sorry, I, uh, I really wanted to hit that one. I'm as like, far well, as it. Marcus's question, we have what you need, right? Yeah. That's the bottom line. The props public safety program, just so you know, has two different kinds of seats. They're good for a year. Uh, you have pilot seats and manager seats. Managers get the super admin. The other thing that the manager seat includes, do, 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 we finally did it, um, we have aggregated and created a standard operating procedures template. We also have every resource you would need to run your program. We also go over whether you should fly under COAs or 107. We also go over waivers, the whole nine, like it's all there. This is The reason it's taken us so long to get this out is because when we came to market with it, we had to fundamentally take the standard up a notch. Nitz, I love you. I think you're doing a great job, but your standard is lowest common denominator, and we want to take that up to the next level. I hope to work with you guys in the future, but when it comes to what I have seen to help public safety and start a drone program and run a drone program, I want to give you the best. I want to be Apple, not Android. I want to wait to roll it out to give you the best that I can give you. And, and by the way, giving the best means working with the best. Which we not have. Not doing it all on our, on our own mm-hmm. and pretending we know everything. It's finding the right people, which we're doing, and it's been awesome. Which, by the way, let me, I'm going to give some points. To end this show, I just want to say thank you. <laughs> Everybody's thinking. Yeah. Can thank you. <gasps> thank you, Jesus. <gasps> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, but anyway, just a, just a little bit of gratitude. Huge shout out of gratitude to, uh, to Bill English and his team of, uh, uh, of transportation investigators for giving us the opportunity to teach at the academy and to really, um, I mean, Bill was almost like a mentor at times, you know, really kind of saying, you know, I love what you're doing, Paul. I love your standards. I love this. But let's take that and let's Let's add it into real world what we're doing and provide that information to people. So I just want to say thank you so much, Bill, for not only being a mentor in my aviation uh, world, uh, but for providing opportunities to us. And now that we are literally one of the written standards of training for the NTSB, that is honestly one of the highest and really non-official accolades I could have ever received in my life. And I'm so grateful for that. So, 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 so grateful. I wear that challenge coin on top of my 107 uh, certificate. Every drone job I fly, including trainings, and everyone asks me about it. And I've got a lot of challenge coins now, but that's always still the one that I wear uh, with me every time I fly. So I want to say thank you to you. Also, a uh, big shout out and, uh, and thank you to our friends at the FDNY Uh, Big shout out uh, to our friends and Gabe, I haven't talked to you in a long time, I really should, to our friends at the San Jose Fire Department, Um, excuse me, not San Jose, uh, Rancho Cucamonga Fire Department, Moises from San Jose, you're cool too, I really actually appreciate how how blunt you are. (laughs) I feel like we need more of that in the world. Uh, but uh, Buzz was one of our early. Buzz. Buzz and Gabe, yep, from yeah. Rancho Cucamonga. Yeah, grateful for Anaheim as well. There are so many departments that uh, that I really love working with departments because they have that higher standard. They have the willingness to learn. They want to do it right. Oh, I uh, also want to say thank you to our good friend from Nashville Metro CSI. Um, also grateful for our, of course, Steve, yes, Steve's Steve, awesome. Stephen Sharp, uh, grateful for our friends who attended from the, uh, FBI CSI team, learned a lot from that guy. He was really fun. Um, and other people that unfortunately I cannot mention for security purposes, but, uh, also grateful to opportunities that we've had with the air force. So very, very, very grateful. Also Elon Musk. Thanks, man. Appreciate you, buddy. So <laughs> he has no idea, but yeah, no, it's like with four people lower than him that hired us, but whatever. Still grateful to you, Elon. So anyway, uh, all that to be said, we have been presented with opportunities simply because I believe we have we have a high standard. We want to teach from experience, and all in all, we try to teach drone flying parallel to aviation 
in general, meaning engine run up tests. What's the same thing on a drone? Well, we have that, you know, so I think that's why we've been given the opportunities. You know, it's easy to get the accolades. It's hard to maintain it. And so we are in maintain and grow phase right now. Metamorphosis, as you'd call it. But when it comes to the drone programs we offer for LEO, props, public safety, LEO, check it out, props.thedroneu.com. And that was probably the longest show that we've had. But man, I had some information I wanted to get out. So I think we're going to leave now. Okay. Goodbye. No, just <laughs> that was my super troopers reference for all of you uh, public safety out there. But uh, anyway, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're interested in props and you have questions, just reach out to us, support at thedroneu.com. Or I'll give you my personal email, paul at thedroneu.com. And if I respond, it will, probably won't be from that address. It'll be from a different one. But uh, oh, we got to get that fixed. Yeah, we do got to get that fixed. <laughs> but that's also all my filter, so it's cool. Um, but that said, if you have questions, if you want help in developing your program, scaling your program, or starting your program, check out props.thedroneu.com. Schedule a demo with us. We'll take you through the whole site, show it to you, give you a peek behind the curtain so you can see uh, if it works for you. So that's it. Right on. See you next time.